and welcome to another episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, it feels as if I've just sat down yesterday <laughs> to film the last uh, preview video. Um, but yeah, here I am with another one. <laughs> it might sound a bit crazy, but um, the August collection featuring a very special launch um, is coming very soon already. Um, and that is because we are going on vacation for the first time in forever. And um, I wanted to kind of yeah, make this accessible before I go and therefore I'm already <laughs> um, having another uh, collection prepared. It's just a really small one and just a little check-in and it's all circling around a very special launch um, that I'm particularly excited about and yeah, so I just recorded, I'm just recording this little video here to show you what we've been working on and what we've prepared for this collection. Um, to those of you who are new here, um, I start, I'll start out telling you what uh, yarn bases we will have available in this collection and give you a little bit of an overview. Um, and I'll, then I'll show you the colorways that we dyed um, with natural dyes and that will be available um, for this collection. And at the end of it all, I'm gonna share a bit more about the new special and exciting launch that we've prepared. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I guess, let me show you what we prepared. Okay, um, base-wise, this update is just going to be a very small one. So we didn't prepare a whole lot. Um, but what we have is the second and last batch of our Summer Blend Linen in the 4-ply and the DK base. And we launched that one with the July collection. Um, and you really received that so well. Thank you so much. It was absolutely wonderful. And I have to say, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost a bit sad, but this I, I designed this to be a seasonal yarn and I don't want to carry it around through the whole winter season. Um, so this is going to be the last batch of this spin run and it won't be back before the spring next year again because I, can, I think I kind of have to streamline what basis to release when and we're going to have a couple of new releases in the fall already and so I think it's appropriate to uh, keep this one a bit more of a seasonal. Um, but yeah, so with this update we're going to have the second uh, much smaller batch of linen available. Um, before it goes uh, into a little um, winter sleep, <laughs> if you want to say it like that. And yeah, it's just going to be a very small amount. So yeah, just be aware of that, that in case it's interesting for you. Um, yeah, it's not a lot that we were able to do because there wasn't a lot left from the spin run. Um, the next base that we're going to restock is our cloud silk mohair, um, which is an ethical mohair with uh, cruelty-free silk. And um, we will have a handful of colorways on this one as well. Um, and last but not least, we are having a new base available and I'm going to start out with that one and telling you a bit more about it, I guess. Um, because it's very special um, and it is a new sock yarn. It is our new uh, sock yarn Ovis that is a fully plastic free and natural sock yarn but let me give you a little bit of an overview of that one in the next section. So with this new sock yarn I'm incredibly excited because I think this has been in the making since 2020 um, which is three years uh, from now and I cannot believe we finally made this happen. Um, it was a bit of a longer journey and I also want to dedicate uh, a video to this one, though it's not recorded yet. I'm going to link it here as soon as it launches. But for this collection we're gonna have a little bit of a smaller soft launch and I want to carry a couple of video content uh, things around this yarn base and so the full-on introduction with all its backstory um, 
It's going to come in another dedicated video as well, where I'm also going to show my favorite sock patterns and a couple of tricks and tips um, around knitting with non-superwash uh, and plastic-free sock yarns. But for now, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how this base feels like and kind of how it came to life. Just a quick summary. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've been working on this for forever. I wanted to have my own like personal uh, sock yarn for a very long time, but I'm also very specific when it comes to what I like in a sock yarn. And so the design process was incredibly long. Um, so first of all, I wanted it to be sturdy and hold up despite being without any nylon or superwash. Um, which already was quite of a journey because, um, you know, there, is, there are a couple of rules uh, around what fibers um, and what sheep, sheep breeds have certain, um, how do you say, have certain um, advantages in terms of durability. So there are a couple of uh, sheep breeds that are known for slightly sturdier um, fibers, uh, whereas others are not as sturdy, depending on the staple length and all these things. But with the whole design process, I realized that even though you follow the rules or the, the uh, experiences, um, it does not necessarily turn out that way. So yeah, we had a couple of test runs where I was sure that that fiber would work perfectly and it didn't. <laughs> so yeah, I think we knitted in the in the past years. We had the the sample spun uh, once we found the mill that we wanted to work with. Um, and we had samples spun of so many different fiber blends and we knitted so many pairs of socks <laughs> because with each of the samples I wanted to make sure I tested the blend before we got it spun. And so I, I guess we knitted around like 10 pairs of socks or so out of the different sample blends. And then I would walk around on them for like weeks to see if they are actually holding up to my expectations. So <laughs> yeah, that's also one part why it took so incredibly long to design this blend in the end. And also um, with the kind of twist and how thick I wanted it, it was yeah, it was a learning curve on, um, you know, what I like and what I don't like. And so, yeah, I'm very grateful for this experience and for going this way and leaving it the, the room and the time it needed to come to life because I've learned incredibly much about uh, yeah, yarn designing. And I think already in a couple of yarns that I've, uh, that I've released in the past couple of months, that knowledge already was in them. So it was actually really nice to spend all this time <laughs> on this yarn and uh, be able to, yeah, be able to learn about fibers and spinning specs and all these things. So it was absolutely wonderful. Um, although I'm happy when we finally found the blend that we liked because it was, yeah, a longer journey. Anyhow. Uh, let me tell you what it is about. So this is Ovis Sock, our new sock blend. And uh, it is available in two different natural colors. That was also one of the challenges we were facing when designing the yarn because um, as some of you might know, I absolutely love to dye on non-white yarns. And so I wanted to have the freedom uh, of keeping my kind of signature dye style and uh, getting a colored um, a colored sock yarn spun. But also, you know, with a couple of fun colorways like multicolors and such, um, a white makes it a bit easier. And so I also wanted to have the Acru Sheepy White one. And that's why we got both. And yeah, these are the two colors. The blend is 50% Cheviot and 50% Jacob Sheep. Uh, which are considered more on like the hardier side um, of sheep breeds and that also resembles in their fleeces. So they are kind of a bit more sturdy, less lustrous, less um, less soft and yeah, soft is a very individual thing, but you know, less sleek, uh, a bit more woolly. And um, yeah, these are the out 
outcome uh, of our little research series um, to hold up the best. So yeah, a 50% um, Cheviot, 50% Jacob. In the white one, it's 50-50 of white Jacob and white Cheviot. And in the gray one, we have 25% of dark gray Jacob resulting in this darker gray shade. And it has been spun to a 375 meters per 100 gram, so just slightly thicker than your traditional 400 meters per 100 gram fingering uh, weight yarn would be. And that is because in my experience knitting socks without nylon and without any um, artificial fibers, it can help to um, knit them on a slightly tighter gauge. And I mean, I wouldn't really like to go much more smaller in needles than like two millimeters or so. And so with this one, I wanted to have the yarn slightly heavier. So with like your standard 2.25 or 2.5 millimeter needles, you could get a little bit more density in the gauge and could still knit kind of traditional um, sock patterns that are designed in a regular 400 meters per 100 grams yarn. So I wanted it to be kind of accessible in that way. Um, and let's speak about the name. Ovis is um, the Latin word for sheep. And I chose this name, one, because I have a long background in um, Latin, because I went to school and we had to mandatorily um, uh, have Latin courses for, I think, at least four years, and some had it even for, I think some had it for eight. Is that even possible? Yeah. Um, and so we, yeah, we had Latin in school and then also ancient Greek. And so I'm very much into uh, Greek and Roman mythology and generally all things Latin call my name, kind of. <laughs> I don't know why, but because I wanted this yarn to have all the good things that sheep fleeces provide to us and not have any artificial or any kind of other fibers also no plant fibers in it. I wanted it to be as sheepy as possible because I believe in the um, in the great properties of also warming and dirt repelling and water repelling um, the, the properties that wool has. And I totally believe that we don't necessarily need any artificial or any, um, any additives to that. And I wanted to keep it as sheepy as possible <laughs> and that's why it's called Ovis. Um, of course this is a personal preference and I totally don't blame anyone who would love to add another fiber to their sock yarn. I mean I also just created a linen blend. It's not that I'm totally against plant fibers in, in, uh, in yarns or anything but for this sock yarn you know from my experience and knitting a lot of um, socks I just realized that I prefer the, the really woolen ones and that they are keeping my feet the most warm um, and so I wanted it to be you know back to the roots um, just sheep just wool and that's why it's called Ovis or Ovis sock if you wanted to call it that way um, what else is there to say um, about durability um, Apart from uh, choosing very durable fibers uh, for this um, for this blend, we also got it spun to a slightly higher twist than you would usually do a fingering weight yarn, so it's a bit more um, durable that way as well. And I'm going to talk about this more in the dedicated video that I'm going to record about this um, yarn base, but I have try the socks knitted out of this blend thoroughly and I wore them for months in the studio working in shoes um, and it has held up incredibly. I'm going to show you a couple of socks that I've knitted um, in the dedicated video because yeah for more reality on YouTube <laughs> I want to show you how they look like after months of wear. Um, still I want to put out a little disclaimer that Everyone's different on their socks and I've noticed so many people who are like, you know, having trouble with sock yarn bases from other uh, companies um, that I never had an issue with. Um, 
but I've also tried to, um, you know, not wear them only in the way that I would wear them at home, but I really tried to wear them as hard as I could. Um, but still, I know that there are a couple of people out there that are like <laughs> destroying socks, <laughs> and uh, I don't want to say that it's uh, solving everyone's problem um, forever. That's not. I mean, I cannot say that because everyone's different with their socks, but for me, this was the blend of um, woolen sock yarn that I think has held up the best by far. I mean, I do love my Corridor sock, um, which was an, a base that we uh, used to have before. We kind of discontinued that one uh, with the latest update um, because Ovis is coming, so that was kind of the... this one is the... Um, the new sock yarn and I kind of didn't want to carry two sock yarns at a time. Um, so yeah, I do love that one as well. Corridale sock is still one of my absolute favorite yarns and I also love the versatility of it because it's also super, you know, easy to work in like shawls or so. It's not necessarily just a sock yarn, but um, yeah, this one still wins for me, if I'm honest. Also because it has a bit more of a rustic and dry touch and I feel like it has a lot more warmth um, in like in comparison to Cor Corridale Sock, for example. It's very... it feels very woolly, but not in a scratchy kind of way, to me at least. That's again something very personal and I know that we've talked about this uh, multiple times on this channel that I... I don't want to say if a yarn is soft or not, because I cannot decide that for you and how you experience the softness. But um, with this one, I can definitely say that um, it has this slight, like, woolly halo. I don't know if it's visible, if the camera wants to focus. Yeah, you can kind of see it over here, that there is kind of a woolly, woolly halo. And that also contributes to the warmth, I feel, because, yeah, the more of these little hairs that stick up, the more air they can trap and the more air warms up and keeps your feet toasty. So yeah, this is Overstock. I could ramble about this for forever, but I won't, and I'm gonna record uh, the dedicated video about it. And also a couple more videos around uh, sock knitting with uh, non-superwash and non-nylon yarn, so I hope that's gonna be helpful. Um, Stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm going to keep showing you uh, the couple of few colorways that we just dyed on this base, but there's also something very special coming around it that I'm going to announce at the end. So I recommend to stick around until the end and I'm going to put the timestamps so you can just jump through the sections. Um, but for now, let me show you what colorways we dyed on Ovis Sock. Okay, um, let me show you the colorways that we're having on overstock. So I showed you these two already. These are the two undyed shades that we're also going to make available for this little launch. Um, and this is the, just the undyed gray and this is the white or natural or however you might call it. Um, and then we just have a few colorways and it's not a lot that we've dyed of these. Um, just because this is kind of a bit like a soft launch um, and so, just to be aware of it, we might not have like a ton um, of each colorway. But let me start out with the first batch of colors that are kind of more in the pinkish uh, colorway region. Um, starting out with a new colorway. Um, this one is called Heather, and it's something between a coolish pink and a purple, if you may say so, and I think it's very beautiful. And it's dyed on the gray base, which I absolutely love because it shows the the gray parts so well, and it has so much depth this way. Though it also, of course, really mutes um, the colorways dying on the gray, and so in case you're after a little more. Um, how do you say, um, you know, saturated or not, not so muted um, colorways. We also dyed some pinks on the white base. And this one is Champagne Supernova, which is a slightly warmer, slightly variegated light pink. 
followed by Ballerina, which is Champagne Supernova, slightly cooler and slightly more saturated little sister. I don't know if you can see that, but here is Champagne Supernova and this one is Ballerina. And last but not least, in the slightly pink region, um, we dyed our colorway Raspberry on um, the darker gray base. And here you can see the difference. I'm going to show you, because we also dyed that colorway on our Silk Mohair base Cloud. I'm going to show you that one and how you know the colorways differ depending on what base they're dyed on. So this one is Raspberry on the over suck in the gray base. And next up we're transitioning kind of into the more earthy shade region, though this one could technically be considered a pink kind of as well, but this one is Oxalis and it's a berry brown kind of shade. Also dyed on the dark gray, not the dark gray, on the darker base, on the gray base, because I love how saturated it is this, this way. So this one is Oxalis. And next up we'll have our colorway Hawthorne, which is something between a pink and a beige. I would say it shows up a tiny bit more pink in real life than it does on camera. It has been dyed on the gray base as well. So this is Hawthorne. Next up we'll have some new colorways and this one is Papyrus um, because it reminds me of old Papyrus paper. Paper. <laughs> it, it has not been called paper there at that time but it looks like a Papyrus piece so that's why I called it that way. And then we also have another kind of earthy beigey shade and that one is Oat, which is more of a neutral beige with less warm undertones than for example Papyrus has, if you want to see it together. These are the two shades. These are both dyed on the white, as you can see, so they have less of the grey specks in them. And then we have two more shades um, dyed on the grey base, also more in the earthy region. And this one is Ginger, which is a rusty kind of orange. And then last but not least, we dyed Olive, which is an olive green yellow colorway that I think is just perfect for the fall and a couple of you know a pair of really fall like cozy socks. I think these three <laughs> are just so autumnal and I don't know if you can actually tell but we're having the most gloomy and terrible weather and I think it has been raining for almost I don't know, two weeks straight or so, so it's like really dark and gloomy and I really hope you can see the colorway still because it's, yeah, it's very dark. But you know, I kind of was in the mood for autumnal colors <laughs> due to this kind of weather, so maybe that you can tell that. But another combination that I really absolutely love is Hawthorne and Oat. I feel this is kind of almost like a vintagey colorway or color combination, if you will. And I also love to pair it with Papyrus. I think that's very pretty as well. But yeah, let's not get this video get too long. <laughs> um, I have a couple of other bases to show to you. So um, yeah, this is Oversock and I hope you're gonna love it as much as I do. Feel free to shoot me any questions if you're um, insecure about something uh, regarding the base. 
Um, and please do that via email, um, that's hello at woolentwine.com because I'm having a lot of issues keeping up with my Instagram DMs at the moment. So um, it might actually happen that I don't read your requests. So please, uh, if you have any questions, um, email is much better than Instagram DM. Um, but I guess before it gets even darker out, let's continue with the other bases. So I have adjusted the lighting a little bit. I hope it's gonna stick uh, like this for a bit, but it's getting light and dark out all the time. So I hope it's gonna be visible anyways and that you can see something. Um, next up, I want to share um, the colorways that we'll have on the second batch of our linen summer blend. Um, and that one is gonna be available in the four ply and the DK version again, and in 50 gram skeins again. So we have the fingering weight version that is linen four ply and that has a 200 meters per 50 grams, which equals a pretty standard fingering weight yarn. And then we'll have the DK weight version that is 115 grams per 100, no, 115 meters per 50 grams. <laughs> wow, this was horrible. I hope you could understand. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was, um, this is gonna be available on both uh, these yarn weights. And as a little reminder, um, linen is a blend of 25% unbleached and untreated um, flax fibers, so just undyed linen, and 75% uh, of a blue faced Leicester fleece um, that is not white but in like an oatmeal color, so it's like a naturally colored blue faced Leicester and the unbleached natural linen in a blend. Uh, resulting in a beautifully drapey, slightly heavy feeling um, summer yarn that's just perfect for uh, either like summer tops or small projects um, or even transition pieces for the autumn or so because I feel like it's not necessarily just a summer yarn, it's really versatile and especially the DK weight version would be perfect for this kind of weather that we're experiencing right now. Um, I have a whole video on linen where I also show um, a lot of swatches and samples that I've knitted, or not me, mostly my mom, <laughs> but <laughs> um, that we knitted um, to show the yarn properly. And in that video, you can also find uh, quite a few pattern suggestions for this yarn if you're unsure on what you can do with it. Um, in case you're unsure about something, you can also um, shoot me an email and ask if you think a pattern is suitable for it. Uh, I'll very honestly answer <laughs> um, from my experience, of course. So, um, did I forget anything? Yeah, I wanted to mention again that this is the last batch of the spin run we'll have and um, if we can make it again, it's not gonna be uh, back before next spring. So if you've been eyeing this base, now is the time. And we also have a few shades from the latest batch that we released in the July collection. So make sure to maybe check out the shop and what's in stock right now still, um, in case you're lacking, you know, a color for like an accent or so. Um, you can also check that out. Um, but all the other colorways that we have are either a restock of something sold out or a new colorway. So yeah, you need to check out uh, the listings that are currently in the shop um, to see what's still available on the other colorways. Um, so without further ado, let me show you what we'll have available. So this one is the first colorway. I'm showing it on the four ply base and it's also going to be available in the DK. All colorways will be available in the DK as well. But this is just the undyed shade um, of which we'll restock the last skeins and last time this was incredibly popular um, and I think we now have like one fourth of the amount we had last time so in case you are looking for this colorway or this undyed shade um, I think it would be recomm uh, recommendable to be on time for the update. But yeah, this is just the undyed, um, showcasing the natural shades of the flax fibers and the BFL. Next up, we have one restock because this colorway was gone after just a couple of minutes in the past um, 
in the past shop update and this is the colorway Hawthorn. Again, it's we dyed this one on the Ovis sock as well and it's like a rosy, beigey tone. Very wearable, I feel. And I'm actually currently knitting um, my Nupolan shawl out of this shade. Um, and that one is also shown in the dedicated video about linen. Um, so in case you want to see how it knits up in like a lacy pattern, you can check out that video uh, and it's exactly this colorway. So we are restocking this one just because the demand seemed to be really high last time. And yeah, Hawthorne and the Undyed have been available in the last update already and they are being brought back. Um, and then we have three new colorways and in these ones you can also see that I have been kind of in like an autumnal mood, I guess. <laughs> so first of all we have the colorway Almond, which is a beautiful warm beige. Um, slightly more warmer than the Undyed. I'm going to show them side by side so you can see. Um, but yeah, here is the undyed and this one is almond, in case you are not too much into the cooler undertones but prefer slightly warmer ones. Hello camera, do you want to focus? Ah, here we go. So yeah, almond and the undyed. Next up we have a colorway that's actually a classic on our BFM Massam base and I thought to bring it on the linen base as well and I love it on this base. So this one is Caramel, which is, hello, why is it so difficult to focus today? I don't understand. So this one is Caramel and it's like a saturated caramelly brown. And in this colorway you can also see um, the slightly heathered effect resulting from the linen fibers that are in this base because they take the dye differently. I also tell that in the other video. Um, so I'm not gonna repeat myself here, but it's just lovely, I think. So that one is caramel. And last but not least, we have another colorway that's not necessarily very summery, but I just really enjoy dyeing it on it. And that one is crimson. It's a very saturated, dark red, crimsony red. So yeah, this is the last colorway that we'll restock. I'll try to hold them all up together. Let me see if I can manage <laughs> without any accident. But yeah, these are all the new shades. So this is the Undyed and the Hawthorn. No, sorry, the Undyed, the Caramel, then Hawthorn, Crimson and Almond. So these are all sh the shades that we'll have available on the linen blend, both in the 4-ply and the DK weight version. So that was quick because we only have four colors. Um, so let me jump into the next section and tell you a bit more about the next base we are restocking. So last but not least, we are going to restock our uh, ethically produced uh, cruelty-free silk mohair base Cloud, which is uh, a like a lace weight standard silk mohair yarn with around 420 meters per 50 grams and um, yeah on this one we dyed a couple of neutrals that might be nice to pair with a few of the colors that we dyed on the other bases as well as a couple more punchy colors um, that I hope you will really enjoy and this video, uh, no, this base has a dedicated video as well that I'm going to link um, in case you're curious about the making process because we got this custom spun for wool and twine and um, yeah, it's just a lovely silk hair yarn that I really enjoy to dye on as well because it just has this special kind of halo that's really fun to work with. Um, let me start out with the pinks again, as we did with the over... Oh wow, is it getting really dark here? Let me check if I can adjust the lighting a little bit. I'm terribly sorry, but I hope you can still see the colorways, kind of. First of all, we will restock our colorway shell. 
which is a light pink with slightly purplish undertones. I don't know if that's really visible, but this is called Chill. Next up we'll have a restock of Champagne Supernova, which is a slightly more saturated and slightly more goldish pink. These are the two next to each other. This is Shell and this is Champagne Supernova. Next up we have a more saturated pink and this one is the Raspberry colorway. And this is what I mean by the different base colors of yarn and how they affect uh, colorways because as a little reminder this is the Raspberry colorway on the obvious space in the dark gray so here you can see how much it mutes and how much it changes um, the base and the colorway depending on the base so next up we will continue with a few more of the neutrals um, and these are you know very easy to pair with for example the undyed um, shades of Ovis if you would like to knit like a sock with a mohair or even a shawl because I think that's also something that would be beautiful. Um, and this one is a one-of-a-kind um, that was dyed with Mahonia berries. Um, I dyed or I dyed this with my friend Viola of Atelier Fon. It's just a blushy light beige with like a tiny bit of a pinkish undertone. And it's a one-of-a-kind because I cannot repeat this. Um, next up we have Ghost Light, which is a really light, almost white colorway with like grey-greenish undertones. Next up we have Fog, which is a really light grey-green that I think is absolutely beautiful. And just so you can see the difference between them, I'm going to hold them all up together. So this is Ghost Light, this is Fog, and then we have the one of a kind that's a bit more warm in undertone. Not sure if it's visible, but yeah. I hope you can get an idea. Hello. This is so annoying because I guess it has to do with a really bad lighting. But I hope you can see anyways. So yeah, these are the neutrals. Next up we'll have some more saturated earthy shades. Um, starting with this one and it's called Bark. It's a dark reddish undertoned brown that I think is super pretty. Then next up we have our colorway Raisin, which is a dark, really deep dark berry tone with slightly purpley undertones, like more purple than Oxalis, for example. So this is Raisin. And then last but not least we have two colorways that are uh, kind of one of a kind again because they are dyed with indigo and as you might know they are not repeatable. Um, and the first one is this beautiful one and I just decided to call it aqua because it has this greenish undertone um, under the blue and it really glows in the light. I think it's so beautiful. So this one is aqua and then we have this one and this is called pistachio and it's like a super deep, like not deep in color but it has a lot of depth in different shades, kind of green. Absolutely love this one. Hello camera, oh gosh this is so annoying, I'm terribly sorry. Here you can see. 
So yeah, these are all the colorways on our cloud silk mohair. Um, and I guess we're at the end of this video, um, like, like of the colorway showing and I can tell you a bit more about a super exciting project um, that I've been working on for the past couple of months uh, that has to do with Ovis Sock. Um, but without further ado, let me jump right in. So for the launch of this um, new sock yarn that has been in the making for such a long time, I kind of wanted it to be a very special um, launch phase. Um, and therefore I reached out to a couple of uh, designers and other makers of beautiful knitting related products and I kind of curated uh, like a little monthly series um, of different things celebrating this new um, base and each month has a certain theme um, and after this theme there was um, a design uh, made inspired by the whole theme and we will have monthly boxes um, where you can purchase the required yarn, get the pattern and have some other goodies from other makers that I've collaborated with. This was absolutely wonderful to make because you know I just love to curate um, beautiful collections and things and um, joining creative forces with so many like-minded people was just absolutely wonderful and I cannot thank uh, everyone enough for being a part of this project. Um, it was just absolutely wonderful and I really really hope I can showcase the beautiful projects and uh, products and designs um, as much as they deserve because it's just everything is just beautiful and uh, let me give you a quick admin of how this is going to work because we have um, designed four themes from August to November and I'm going to um, show you each the contents of each box beforehand so you can know what you can purchase. Um, and I will also try to make it possible for every month to have the colorway of the box uh, available separately from the box, um, just so in case the things in the box are not your cup of tea, you can still get the colorway and potentially buy the pattern by the from the designer. Um, and for the August collection, let me tell you a bit more of the theme. So what was in my head was kind of um, a withering meadow, um, rich harvests and kind of summer blooms that are slowly transitioning into autumn and slowly dying back while some of the produce is just coming into fruit. Um, this is kind of what I associate with um, August and I see a lot of wildflowers and you know slowly withering into the fall and that was kind of what inspired the whole theme. And so with the design, I'm happy to say that I got my lovely friend Jenny Ansa of Koti Kotoni uh, on board who designed um, a sock pattern that I'm actually currently test knitting so I can show you. <laughs> um, but it's um, an iteration of uh, her sweater pattern Ohra that she made into socks. And I can already show you how it looks like um, because this is pattern. It's like a beautiful cabled um, repeat with then a couple of wrapped stitch things just as in the Ohra sweater and this is the design for the August theme and I'm incredibly proud to be part of this and have all this together. It's just beautiful and the colorway uh, is designed, like it, I dyed the colorway specifically for the designer. We curated the colorway um, together for this box. And this one is called Ceres, just after the Roman name for uh, the goddess of um, harvest and fertility, uh, which I found very fitting with the whole theme. Um, and funnily enough, Jenny told me she also has a background in studying Latin for a while, so it's actually, it had to be, you know, and 
yeah, this is the Cirrus colorway, and it's um, something between a beige and a soft pink. It's a beige with a pink undertone, I would say. And um, yeah, this was specifically designed to um, suit the pattern. And Ochra is actually inspired by um, the barley grains because that is what Ochra means. It means barley in Finnish. So that is the background of the story. And this pattern will be available with the box um, and of course also individually if you want to get it um, but are not into the whole box theme. But let me share a bit more about what will be in the box. So you might have had a glimpse at this little thing over here, this little progress keeper. And this is one of the uh, other contributions to this box. And these are um, little stitch markers um, made by my friend Riley of Soft Spoken. Now they are handmade and Riley actually um, foraged or picked the wildflowers for these little um, for the little stitch markers and progress keeper. And there will be a set of um, markers that are specifically designed for socks. So we kind of curated the little set of, um, let me see if it focuses. We have two little side markers with the little brown uh, pearls. Then there is a beginning of round marker, which is this smaller, um, let me see if I can, yes, which is the smaller flower shaped uh, marker. And then there's this progress keeper that I also showed on my sock. Um, and they were designed to also fit the whole uh, color theme of the sock. So as you can see, it's a perfect match. And yeah, I'm incredibly happy um, that Riley designed these um, for the box because I think I could not be happier with them. They are just so stunning. I of course immediately grabbed um, a set for myself. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just really happy and I'm, I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out with the like the color matching. They think it just goes really well together. So yeah, these will be in the little August box um, alongside, because it's not all, um, another very beautiful thing that is also inspired by the whole theme. And we will also have these little pouches. These are fully handmade and they are eco printed, um, which is a technique where you can apply uh, plants directly to fabric and then it's themed. Like, of course, it's pre treated fabric, but it's themed, and then you can get these beautiful patterns um, on the fabric. And these are made by my dear friend Vera of Studio Solas. Um, she's based in the Netherlands and she is an absolutely wonderful natural dyer as well. I'm in awe of all, her, of all her skills and, you know, she's just wonderful. She's also an all over very sweet person. And um, yeah, she foraged the plants for, these, for this eco print and then eco printed them and then hand sewed them. So they are fully handmade out of natural linen with um, the eco printed flower print. Isn't it beautiful? And the shape and size of this pouch we designed to be um, suitable for all your sock notions. So Vera made the size in a way that you, it can fit uh, a regular 15 centimeter, how many inches is that? I don't know, but just the regular 15 centimeter DPNs even and potentially a sock ruler. I'm going to open it all up because I think it's nice to also see the inside. So you can uh, untie this little linen strap and then you can just open it. And it has these, there's one little pocket 
And it also has a zipper pocket um, in case you want to separate your things a little. And then a second pocket in the front. So there's plenty of space. Um, it's lined with natural linen as well. And there's plenty of space for all your notions that you might need um, for your sock knitting. So potentially a pair of DPNs or also a, a larger needle would also fit in here if you prefer to knit the magic loop. Um, stitch markers potentially. I have my little set that I can actually put inside. So it fits very well and um, yeah, whatever you might need uh, for your sock knitting, like a sock ruler or a measuring tape. Um, and this way you can have all your sock notions um, with you um, and just pop this one into your project bag and nothing is getting, um, you know, untidy or so. And yeah, let me try to hold everything up together so you can see. I'm sorry the sock is not finished yet, but um, yeah, I didn't have enough time to finish the whole sock, but I hope it can still give you an idea of how it's gonna look like. So here is the sock, the stitch markers that are twisted around, just a second. And the stitch markers and the little notion pouch with the eco-printed fabric. I don't know, but I'm just so incredibly happy with this and it was so wonderful to work on this and I don't know, it's so much fun to see these come together. I think the theme is met so well and I think it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, these are the contents of the box and I will link everyone who contributed to this box uh, down below and I, I recommend checking them out because they are all lovely humans and they are doing uh, wonderful work and it was really pleasurable to work with them and so thank you <laughs> for participating uh, in case you're watching this video. Thank you so much for being a part of this box. I'm over the moon with how it all came together and I could not be happier uh, being able to call this my job and join creative forces with such great people. I'm just really happy. The admin of these boxes. Um, they are going to be quite limited in number. So in case you're looking for it, I would recommend getting one and being on time for the update. Um, and they will be pre-packed. So in case you're ordering um, something else with the box, it might be, um, yeah, it might be a box in a box. So that sounds kind of wasteful, but I want to make it all manageable for us because we are also um, leaving for vacation on the 18th of August. So the last shipping date is August 17th. And um, with the update being on the 11th, I want to be as prepared as possible. And I'm trying to prepack um, all boxes. So we just have to ship them out as quickly as possible. Um, and don't have a lot of stress before we are going on vacation. Um, which is also one thing I wanted to mention regarding the update. Um, August 17th will be the last shipping date until the first week of September because we are going away for I think almost two weeks. Um, and in that time I will not be able to ship any orders because I'm not at the studio <laughs> and so um, if you order in between uh, that time there will be a, ban a banner on my uh, website and you will be able to read when I'm back but just so you know um, I won't be shipping between the 18th and I think the 2nd of September or 3rd. I'm gonna put it somewhere <laughs> but yeah this is how it's going and um, one more thing I want to announce uh, admin wise is that with the launch of this collection um, and the launch of our new sock yarn base um, I am going to host my very first knit along or make along if you want to call it like that and this one will launch with the July, uh, the August collection on the 11th of August 8 p.m. CET and it will be all around socks without any um, artificial fibers or in general without any fibers that are not wool 
and I will tell all the rules, everything um, in depth and how it's gonna work because there are going to be like different ways of how you can participate depending on how um, much you want to do and how if you just want to you know interact with people and share a couple of pictures or if you want to um, exchange knowledge about um, plastic free and non superwash sock knitting there will be different ways on how you can participate depending on how much time and how much energy you want to put into it um, and I'm going to tell you everything platform how it's going to be hosted um, and everything I'm going to share that with you in the newsletter that goes out with the shop update. So in case you're curious, um, I can recommend signing up for the newsletter. Uh, and I will also make sure to um, tell you a bit more about it over the next couple of weeks. I'm planning to uh, host this for at least a couple of months. So there is plenty of time to sign up. I want it to be very inclusive and I want to... Um, invite you all to exchange thoughts and knowledge and um, I want it to be a very respectful uh, space so I'm gonna moderate everything in a way that no one feels pressured or that there's any rush that's also why I want to keep this knit along going for quite a while and I don't want to focus on you know just finishing project after project um, but rather build a community um, and have it you know as a bit of a knitting everything something together um, with a topic thing so it should be very relaxed I don't want to put pressure on anyone um, but of course there will be uh, prices and everything that's I think that's kind of one of the rules of knit alongs and how they are like um, but all, all over I don't want this to be like you know pressuring or um, you know too tight with all the rules I just want it to be a cozy place uh, of community where we can exchange our thoughts and experiences and just have fun together and um, I really hope you feel invited everyone's invited and I just hope it's gonna be a very lovely lovely thing to host so I'm excited because I have never done anything like this before so any feedback is always very welcome um, but yeah, so much about the knit along. I guess that is it for today's video. If there is anything you're curious about, feel free to email me. Um, as mentioned, I cannot really keep up with DMs at the moment. So if you have a request, um, especially after the shop update, I'm really not much on Instagram packing um, all the orders. So in case you have a question about combining your orders or whatever, please, please, please email is the best way. I hope you enjoy everything as much as I do. A lot of new things. I hope I didn't forget like half of what I wanted to say. <laughs> but um, yeah, hope you're gonna love it as much as I do. And until then, see you soon. Bye!